Before we dive into today's video, I just want to let you know this is going to be a little different of format than what we've had in the past. I'm going to be giving you a little bit more information from inside my office as I did some research on this 1915 American La France. The sound quality of this video wasn't real good. Uh, it was a windy day. So we start out this video with us doing a drive around uh, of the station. I really wanted to get on the truck and see how it rides, see what it feels like to be on the truck. I had an opportunity to play with the siren and talk to him a little bit. Bear with us with the sound quality. I'll try to uh, give you as much information as I can uh, why we take this ride. Obviously it's an open cab, so the wind was an issue, the, the noise of the truck was an issue, uh, but we did the best we can. Bear with us, but pay attention and see what you like. Welcome back to Heroes Next Door. Thank you all for joining us today. We're back in Sussex County doing Franklin Fire Department. We're going to take a look at their 1915 American La France. We're going to do a walk around and even get to ride it. So come join us. Alright Jim, thank you for showing us around this. Now we get to take it for a little ride. Can you talk me through how to run it? Sure. Well, right now you got to put your clutch in and everything. Okay. Got to use the first gear. Put on the brake, let the emergency brake off, step on the gas, and the clutch out. Go down the road. This thing don't have power steering. <laughs> it does not have power steering. No, nope. you got a man. Part of power steering. You get to manhandle it a little bit. Yeah. About how much horsepower does this have? I think it's uh, like maybe 80. Okay. As you can see here, we're just pretty much circle in the firehouse. We go out into traffic, uh, make a quick uh, left or right turn, make another right turn, go up around, basically a big old circle. Uh, so you see our fire, their fire trucks in the background. Uh, we're looking out for traffic, but what was really cool is he let me play with a couple of things um, that I've never had an opportunity to do. When I did the siren as it was going around, I didn't realize how hard it actually is to get that thing to start moving. And the harder you spin it, the louder it gets. The faster you spin it, obviously the louder it gets also. That took actually quite a bit of effort to get that thing to go going. So the more, the faster I do it, the louder it gets. It's almost like the, the old federal cues. That way you just spin it, but it's manual power. The fire company in general only has two people that can drive this fire truck. Jim is one of them. So if he learned very early on on how to drive it. He just, you know, has to practice it and make sure it goes in the right gear. It's not your typical, you know, automatic kind of vehicle that we're used to. This is a stick shift uh, and it's not even the, the normal stick shift you would get on a Volkswagen. So it, it was pretty cool to see him operate it, you know, using his feet, using his hands for everything involved. Okay. So how long did it take you to learn how to drive this truck? Well, I knew how to drive it, but it took me a couple years to learn how to drive this truck. Okay. <laughs> gotcha. Really cool thing about, you know, riding a truck like this is realizing that this is where the fire service really began. You know, these trucks were not cheap back in the day. You know, if you looked at American La France in 1915, you were spending about $10,000 for this fire truck. And if you relate that to the money of that day, for $10,000, you pretty much could buy a house, uh, you could buy a car uh, and furniture pretty much for the same price you bought that fire truck. So it's no wonder that these fire trucks were so well taken care of. The technology that's in these trucks is pretty cool to see because it is span the test of time and a lot of the pumps and the mechanical aspects are in the fire trucks that we see today. Jim, that was absolutely awesome. Thank you for taking us for a ride. We no appreciate problem. it. I appreciate it too. So, it out. <laughs> One of the things that you're going to notice when I'm doing the walk around is that I do it from a per first person point of view. So I kind of focus on Jim, I focus on the truck, and you're going to hear me asking questions from behind the camera. 
It's a different kind of style. I've seen some other YouTubers do it. We figured we'd give it a shot and see how it goes. Tell us what you think in the comments below. We'd appreciate it. And there's only room for two of us. Yes. <laughs> and usually, and I think there's room for three people in the back. That's okay, it. so they would actually nobody hold ride, onto the back. Yeah, nobody rides on the sides. Okay. On, on these old trucks. What is the max speed of this? Because, you know, we were doing probably 10, 15, maybe around the corner. Maybe it could be 25. Okay, okay. I mean, I don't go any faster than 10 or 15 because the front end is loose. Okay. Okay, uh, but this has been all restored, right? Yes. And uh, was this the original color? Yes, it was. Everything is on it, the color in uh, chrome, it came that way. Okay. And a lot of people say it doesn't, but we have paperwork to prove it that it came this way. <laughs> That's awesome. Yes. The body shop painted everything for us. Okay. And okay. But all the firemen basically worked on this. Right. Man. I so, say about 10 people. other than driving it, can you kind of walk me around what it is to put it into pump gear and how does it actually work? Can you show us how to do that? Yeah, Not that we'll flow water, but no. you can kind of. I show you, I gotta walk around with you, but let me turn all the gas off. Okay, all right, I'll step out. Yeah. The one reason you've got to turn off all the gas is because it's like a carburetor that just gets flooded with gas. If you don't turn those pet cocks off, the uh, truck gets really flooded, which is what happened before Jim got there. Some of the other fire guys pulled it off the trailer that it was at, um, that it was on, and then they left the gas on and it flooded. So that's why it took a little bit to get started. And we got a valve here. We turn this one off for the gas. And then we have another one. So it's just a kind of pet cock valve. Yes, and you have another one right here we turn off. All right, right here, it's able to pump it. This is the lever. You gotta push the lever. It goes forward, but there's a, we gotta bolt it so it doesn't. Right. Doesn't, because it does fall and it. it puts it in the gear. gear. Right, right, right. So, okay. you, it, and you lock it in. And then this is the, set the pressure how much you want to set okay it. that's just a valve twist valve yeah okay and then to able to get it prime you would this is your throttle and now when you're pumping this is called it's a mixture okay give you more get uh, more richer gas you want that up so that when you're in pump gear okay all right and so does it have to be take it takes out of gear you chalk the wheels and then put it into pump gear. Right. Because it's you a put pump gear and then you put this in direct gear and first gear. Okay. And I got it in first gear so it doesn't roll. Yeah. Uh, and everything and that's about it. And then, and then you to prime it, we got to go to the other side of the truck. Okay. The but you got your pressure valve or your gauges over on this side right. too. You pump everything from here. Okay. On this side. And you operate. One thing I forgot to mention or even ask about was all the uh, parts that are real shiny. I thought they were chrome, but the more I did the research, I realized that they're not chrome, but they're actually nickel plated. Uh, so when they had this all redone, had it painted, had it uh, nickel plated, they freshened up all that stuff to get it in this condition. You really have to stop by and see this truck. It's absolutely beautiful. Would it take the same kind of hoses that modern yeah. Uh, fire hoses use? Yes. Okay. All right. And then this this is your primer. This would have a little oil in it. And you open it and, this, and you unscrew this and it pumps. And you'll get the prime up. Okay. You know, the, the difference with this this pump, this is rotary gear pump. Called the other one, a tricep pull. Okay. And this, is, this one, you could pick rocks up, fish, it'll come through. It'll go right through. Uh now, if you did that with the other one, you would damage right. the pump. Right. This one would throw away. And all these, like these nozzles you were looking up up there, sure the type of nozzles they had. Okay. And then we have a couple Basically, smoothbore nozzles. Yes, all smoothbore. Now, I noticed the hard suction tubing on the side here. Yes, this is the hard suction. This is what you would put in the, in the brook. Okay. Or a pond. Okay. Or Cause a there, lake. Because there is no tank, though. No. So it you, has a tank, you, but it's called a soda acid tank. Okay. And that's like these fire extinguishers, same thing. They're soda acid. These would turn upside down. Okay. And the bottle would break and then mix with the water inside. Right. I want to pause here for just a moment because I want to talk about the tank. I asked the question whether there is a water tank on the truck. 
And his answer to me was no, there wasn't necessarily a water tank as we know it. You know, we today have anywhere from 750 to 1,000 to 3,000 gallons of water on a fire truck when we're going to the call. This does not have a specific water tank with the exception of the tank that's behind the driver there. They talk, call this a soda acid tank. And what this is, it's a large metal tank behind the driver's seat that holds approximately 40 gallons of water mixed with um, sodium bicarbonate. On the top, it has a glass vial, or they can add it, of sulfuric acid. Uh, and then once they kind of mix that in, they spin it around and that creates a chemical reaction that pressurizes that tank and it puts out, uh, the, it pushes out that water. So they're not running the pump on that initial attack. They can use this for that booster line. They could use it for an attack line, but realistically, you know, you have that water that's on there plus the soda acid combination creating that pressure and it can get up to 200 pounds per square inch they're going to use a sm uh, smooth bore nozzle at the tip of that and they're able to do an initial attack on a fire it's considered class a fires which is your typical homes not for electrical uh, it will definitely have issues with electrical fires today uh, but it is also what they used in those portable tanks that we talk about later you'll see it when we were driving around the tank that was down by my left foot is almost a copper based tank that it too is a soda acid based tank with water and that has another vial of uh, sulfuric acid in it that creates that pressure you tip it upside down and out comes uh, the water and soda bicarbonate it's very simple plumbing if yeah. you really think about it it's oh, yeah. it, it's very basic plumbing but it works well yeah. this is the drain the drain once you're done you can drain the whole system and then on the other side, on the pump where we were, the other the main drain pump, drain the pump. So do you have to draft with this truck or can you go right to a hydrant? You, well, back then they didn't really have hydrants. Okay. But you can. We have it set up right like here. This connection here would go on to here. Okay. And then you would hook your hose in here off the hydrant into the thing. Into there. That's when, when they started getting hydrants. Okay. And that's also the same place you'd hook up to draft from? Yes. Okay. Or the other side. They're set up both sides. Both sides. Yes. Very slick. And, uh, and these are your, your gates to open. This is already a 350 gallon pump. 350? Yes. Okay. That's not too bad for 1915? Yeah. That's a pretty good <laughs> size pump. And a, a lot, back then, too, like when you started these, a lot of these trucks did not have electric starter. Okay. These did come with electric starters. And I'll show you how big it looks. I just want to make note here that look how clean this engine is. You know, they did a restoration, obviously, but, you know, just maintaining this, that you can see the springs and the valves and all that kind of stuff, but you don't see any oil that's, you know, leaking out of this. It is very well maintained. And like I said, you know, because these were so expensive back in the day, uh, all these firehouses took extreme pride in these. That's why you have the gold leaf that you see on it. That's why you see the innate details of the lettering and all the uh, logos that they put on them. You know, this is the pride of the community uh, that was able to purchase this. How big are these tires? They look like 40 inch tall at least. They're probably about that. I really couldn't tell you. Original, these aren't the original tires. Okay. They were hard rubber tires. Okay. We, I don't know where the rims are, but the old rims for it still had the rubber tires on. Right. But do because we ride on the roads here. Right. We had to put ru rubber. Rubber. But it's it's wooden spokes. Yes. So it'll make it still original. Right. So how often do you guys take this out? Well, my son he takes it out maybe once a month during the summertime to take the run. Okay. And then parades and stuff parades. like that. Parades and uh, funerals. So the pump is pretty much center of the truck. Look at the details on how they lay this hose into that bed. You know, the idea that you know one is going to go to the water source, one is going to go to the fire, all in one flat lay. Pretty nice to see. Some of the fire trucks that I've seen across the the nation actually have a double layer uh, of hose 
So the bottom one would be maybe going to the fire, the top one goes to the water source, because uh, these trucks are, are drafting. From the fight wet, and then you would lay to the water source. Okay. And then if you the, another engine was already at the pond, or brook, right. you would lay from the water to the fire source. Okay, okay. So kind of like your five inch that goes to the hydrant right. that you would pull off the back of the truck and then your side lays would be there, but it's all in one bed versus split right. on a regular fire truck yeah. of today. Back then, you didn't have your inch and three quarter lines. Right. You all, all you have is two and a half. <laughs> Man. And then the lanterns the themselves, the you know, you imagine you fighting fire fires or going in the dark uh, oh, with yeah, basically a um, thing back then either. lantern used by oil. You know, you got to light that thing and go down the road and, and stuff like that. They didn't have flashlights. And over in the shelf is the horns, what they use, we use them for flowers now. Right. So that's what they, the chief talked to to tell the guys what to do. Okay. So this was the first radios that we would have to give command and orders and stuff like that to let them know where things are going. And the chief would give command signals from that. And here's the difference, this tank, Acid tank. Okay. Same thing. You would crank it here to, to get the, to mix. Get it, it mix it up. Mix it up and everything. And then the, here the difference is the primers here. We had to go to the other side of the, that one to get to the primer. Right. So back. they were thinking more keep the engineer in one spot. Yes. Rather than bouncing back and forth. And, and like here, if you can zoom on here, you can see that one. You couldn't see it too much. You can see how to set your pressure by turning, turning. See how it comes up? Yeah, yeah. See that till you want 160. Boom. That's all you'll get. Man, the math and the engineering that goes into designing these pumps, even way back then, is phenomenal. Here's where we're talking about those copper tanks. You got a bottle on the inside that has a sulfuric acid. You fill half that up with water and you flip that over. You break that bottle. It mixes with soda bicarbonate and the water for each cell reaction builds up pressure in that tank and that's how those things work. That's why these handles are made this way. Okay. So when you did it, you hold it here and turn it upside down. Okay. And you, like if you want, you could set it on the ground. Right. And use the nozzle over here. You know, it has a straight nozzle, but if you want to get a spray, you would have to use your finger. Okay, like the old garden hose. <laughs> What's cool about all these valves is you need to know by memory, which valve goes to which. Nowadays, we put labels on it. You know, this one is a cross lay, this one's the rear. You know, they're always labeling it. But these firemen back then um, definitely had to know their trucks. They're gonna practice with these trucks, you know, pretty much every day to make sure that they know which valve to turn on, which valve to turn off. They're huge. Imagine having headlights that big nowadays on your cars. <laughs> they probably don't shine very far though compared to the LEDs that we have now. I noticed the cranks on the front of the trucks. Yes. That's another way to start it or? Yeah, that's the third way to start it. Same thing, this one has Magneta and battery. Okay. Same thing, that's how you would start it, but neither of them started. Okay. This one had a speed monitor and how many miles you were. Okay. Where well, the other one did not have that. No. Did they even have in 1915? Speed limits for roads? <laughs> Don't know. Yeah. We'd have to do some research on that. Yeah. So what's the side toolboxes? Is that literally just this, toolboxes? This, these tools, these are for the hoses. Okay. This is for the tires. Okay. The lug nut. In case you needed a change? Yes, and then uh, got more tools underneath here. Ah. And that's where your other spanner wrenches and other wrenches to work on the truck. You had to. Well, we're, ho we're uh, we have a county parade, Fireman's County Parade, and Franklin's hosting it this year. Okay. Well, this poster that's hanging up there is the first county parade in was, and you see there's 12 departments listed there. What we did not realize was this year alone, they had another they parade in, uh, that they hosted. And we here? do have some pictures of that, uh, that Venny, one of the guys that reached out to us, sent us over. <laughs> Once again, this was Heroes Next Door. Thank you all for watching. This was a very basic station rigs. Uh, Jim took us through their 1915 American LaFrance. Very cool truck. Thank very you good. for taking us for a ride. You're welcome. If you guys haven't done it yet, do us a favor. Hit subscribe, hit notification, hit those like buttons because it keeps helping us out. We'll see you again next week. Thanks for watching.